fellow listeners of the Art Versations podcast. Welcome back to another episode. This is Art Versations, a meditative conversation about the artistic process. A new artist will sit down with me each week to bridge the gap between the process, the final product, and its infinite transformation. I'm your host, Bree, like the cheese, and I'm thrilled that you're joining me today, especially if it's for the first time. I hope you've had a chance to let your creativity soar today. Allow that right brain to kick into gear, take the reins, and guide you into art If this is your first tune in, please be sure to stick around and creatively fly into that subscribe button. Whoosh. It's the easiest way to stay up to date about new episodes, and it really helps the podcast grow. If you like what you're hearing, tell your friends and their friends and their friends of friends of friends to tune in as well. Please and thank you. Super stoked to bring you this week's episode, honestly. It's with Kristen in Stambolic also known as Tiny Lines on TikTok. She's a multimedia artist who works with film, animation, and dance. Honestly, I feel like a kid in a candy shop with this episode because I've admired her work from afar for a couple months now, and if you've seen her videos on Instagram or not, I highly recommend you check them out. She brings such a unique perspective to the way we visualize and perceive movement, and it was the sweetest treat from Willy Wonka to chat with her. Without further ado, quiet that left brain channel, shh, and join me for episode three of season four. It really is like a visual representation of what's going on in my head. Oh, I love, I does love that. that. Does That's that what make I'm sense? trying to do. Yes, that is exactly what I'm trying to Yay. put out. Hi, Kristen. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing in this current moment in time? I'm doing amazing. I'm so happy to be here chatting with you. It's like a it's like a weird vision of mine that I had, but a very welcome one to have you on. I, I have looked at your work from afar and and you know, we have never actually met in person, but um to be able to pick your brain for an hour is like such a treat for me. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for saying that. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to uh, to talk with you. There's a lot um, that you've been working on recently, which involves the intersection of dance, movement, um, and multimedia layering. And I'm I'm curious, just as like a first question, like how how do you where did you find that 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 um, initial kind of uh point to 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 cross paths of those two things like was it during school was it very happenstance like where did that come from I love getting asked this question actually because I think about it all the time I'm like how did I like I don't actually know how it happened but I will say that when I was in my third year and my final year at uh, the School of Toronto Dance Theater Uh, They do a bunch of like coffee house performances throughout the year. So I wanted to make a film. I was like, I'm going to be a filmmaker. I'm going to make this film. And then I just was my sister, my older sister, who's also a visual artist. She was experimenting with some animation in her uh, university studies. So I was curious, like, what is that? And could I put that on top of a dancer? And so she showed me a little bit. So she was the real person that like introduced me to nice. animation. Um, and then basically on this, this video of my friend Devin Snell that I made, who is also a classmate of mine, I just drew over the, the video and I was kind of obsessed. I was like, <laughs> how do I keep doing this? How do I like, what even is this? Cool. Um, and that video is still up on my Vimeo and it's wild to watch it back because like, I was so fearless in that moment. I was like just drawing and I was like, this is going to be great. So many things have changed and shifted with that whole process, but 
it's amazing to look back. I think that was like the first real moment where I started diving into the cross section of multimedia and dance for sure. Wow, like a, a, a sort of a, just a jump into the deep end, it sounds like, like you just- Yeah, I just tried. did it. I didn't even, yeah. yeah, I didn't even think about it that much, which is wild because cool. now I'm like, the process is really like time consuming and pretty, I have to think about everything a lot and there's a lot more people involved now, but yeah, back then it was just like, I'm just going to draw over my friend and it's going to be great. And I don't know, I kind of miss that. It's nice <laughs> to think about that. <laughs> The progress of like you know just a, a fearless little jump in the deep end and then yeah finally there's I feel like there's there's now you you can you can really catch an eye like you have a clear perspective on what what you want to do it does sound like it's a lot more work but yeah. like at least there's you know there's a progression happening yeah and I think that it's like that with dance as well like mm. I don't know if you feel like this from your own dancing but when you're young or when whenever you started dancing you're just kind of doing it and it's fun <laughs> and you're jumping in the deep end yes. and as time goes on I mean it changes in in amazing ways but it also changes in weird ways like mm. you get more serious about it and everything's a little bit more more pressure on you but yeah the as long as you love changes. it yeah, yeah, like there's still that passion for you. It's it's not like a total monotonous job. Yeah, yeah. Go no, on. I love it. I think Good. about it all the time. I wake up, I want to do it. I go to bed, I want to do it. Sometimes I'll get out of bed and just go back to my computer and work on stuff. So wow. no, I definitely love it. That's really cool. I, I was reading your interview with Purple Glow Mag and you mentioned that like, even though the pandemic was obviously a really hard hit for everyone, like it was actually kind of a nice way for you to just settle into your work mode and, and really like see where your creativity goes like what um I'm curious about like what kind of discoveries you made over these past 18 months if any 18 months oh my gosh <laughs> has it been that long <laughs> something like that I don't have time doesn't yeah. exist. <laughs> that's so wild to put that number out there yeah I know, I, right? I, I um received what I draw on now this big screen tablet I received that in January of this past year so oh, nice. that's when I really started doing it every day and honing in and I was working at a, a couple of different restaurants before um, and also CCDT doing some administrative work so I was like what am I going to do like I'm sure like we all were mm -hmm. what are we going to do but in a weird Saturday. way yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. exactly in a weird way it was it was the best thing for me and I think I just discovered that I've always heard you know that old phrase like it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours to like hone in on your craft and what you want to do and I never really something I didn't believe that it's just I was kind of like yeah like practice makes perfect all that stuff and I never felt that way with dance I was constantly like there's never going to be enough hours to perfect mm -hmm. this I just can't make it happen for myself. So with this, I think I just really discovered over the pandemic that if I do this every day and I keep pushing myself and looking for new ways to use the animation and new ways to interact with dance and movement, like I can see a clear progression in my work from January. And that's so cool to see because it's rare that you can see like visual representations of improvement so cool. that's been wow. the biggest discovery I think for sure wow yeah because you, you yeah I'm assuming you got to just like try everything and anything with all this time I kind of felt the same way yeah. in my work like I was really even though I was alone and I didn't really have a lot of influences outside that I could go to because I'm a very like I really like being around other people that's what fuels my like creative practice but all of a sudden I had to like sit with my own head <laughs> and You're like, who am I? What do I want to do? What's going on inside this big skull? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, what, what is possible right now too? Like use, usually most of my work is on stage. So it's like mm -hmm. really a shift in how can I adapt? How can I be really open and patient with myself? Um, and, and yeah, it's kind of like when I look back on my Instagram or like any other logs that I've made over these past few months, it's, it, it is like you say, like there is a progression that we get to see. Um, 
I wonder too, if like documenting everything and like trying everything and putting it into a project, like even if it's not like your favorite, it's still good to have that, that archive of those, of those drafts or of those like early works. And um, because I think it's like you say, like it's never really enough. Like we're never actually gonna get to a final product. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And I think that also I realized, and I don't know if you realize this too, like we don't have to share everything. You don't have to present mm -hmm. everything. And that was something that, you know, you coming from Ryerson, me coming from TDT, like there is this mentality of like, if you're doing something, it's so it can be performed or presented totally. or you're training to support that performance, mm -hmm. but you don't have to you can just do something and it can just live in your little archive and that's it. And that's really cool because it does take off some of the pressure and it also allows for more play. And then if it's not your favorite, that's great because then you know what you can move away from or you can alter in the end. So, mm. yeah. Totally. I totally agree. There, there were lots of moments where I like truly just abandoned a project put it in the trash, never do yeah. it again, you know, and, and yeah. that's okay too, right? Like that's mm -hmm. part of the, the process, the progression of, of finding a creative voice. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about how you layer um, movement in, in your, in your work, because as a dancer, I wasn't, when I watched these, these little videos or these videos that you make, like it really is like a visual representation of what's going on in my head. Oh, I love, I does love that. that. That's does that what make I'm sense? trying to do. Yes, that is exactly what I'm trying to Yay. put out. Fantastic. Well, and I think as a dancer yourself, like you get, you have a great knowledge of like line and extension and counterbalance. And like, while, while I'm watching these videos, I'm really like, oh yeah, that's where my, line of energy is actually going or like is that is that that's really cool that that's translating I think because I feel like maybe that's some amazing people, some people would watch it and be like what is going on but as dancers yes. we're like oh yeah there's line <laughs> yes that, non yeah. non-dancers are always like what does it mean like what is what is it I'm like <laughs> what kind of reactions do you get <laughs> usually it's from dancers just because that's who I'm like surrounded with in the community but from like my family or friends from long before dance, they're usually like, it looks cool. Like, what is it? Like, mm. what does it mean? Or, um, yeah, I think also like there's a whole sub, like this whole genre of videos on Instagram of commercial dance with these like neon animations over them. I don't know if you've ever seen these videos. Yes, I think um, so. Yeah, and I think that that's what people are always like, oh, you should do something like that because it's very entertaining. It's very fast paced. And honestly, I don't know how to do that because <laughs> those animations are super external almost. Mm -hmm. Like they, they have shapes and they have forms, but they're like influencing the dancer versus what I'm kind of doing, which is the dancer. Everything comes from the dancer and then comes out. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Which honestly, I wish I could do the other way. That's something that I'm kind of trying to figure out how to have a dancer in a video and then be animating. And it's, it's, it can be a contrast, maybe not always like a direct duet or relationship, but mm, cool. But yeah, I don't know where this train of thought even came from, but <laughs> oh, what people say. Yeah, usually yes. it's just like, what, is it, what does it mean? Like, what? I'm like, I don't know what it means. It's just energy. Like, I right. really, I'm not dancing anymore. So I really miss it. And this is kind of my way of still being a dancer within someone else's body. And then I feel like I'm the lines and I'm the energy lines. So yeah. Very cool. It, that it's, makes any sense. Oh my God, absolutely it does. <laughs> and to say goodbye to dance, like for you, like to transition into doing this kind of work. I mean, you're not really, you're not really stopping because you still have, you still have a perspective on like what movement can be, I wonder. Like, um, 
And you, you talk about your sister being a big influence for you. Did she, was she also a dancer? She wasn't, but okay. um, we both went to the same arts high school. So she, she did take dance, but mm. I don't think she would call herself a dancer, but she definitely like understands that, that world for sure. There's such a... I think what I'm trying to say is there's such a like a stereotype dancers, right? Like they're like always in class and they're like really working hard on dance only. Yeah. But I wonder if like being a dance enthusiast and creating videos like this, like it it's still it's still so much a part of the process to 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 be involved. And you talk a lot about collaboration being like a big, big part of your process. And and I wonder if like without you there like the dancer isn't informed or like there, there there's a missing element and and so yeah like I, I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is like maybe you're not saying goodbye you're like just looking at it in a different perspective does that seem like yeah <laughs> yeah no I mean I, I hope that that's what that's what it is. I, I, I just know for myself and for a lot of us, like it can be so emotional mm. when you're kind of defining your relationship with dance, especially when we've gone through these like really rigorous programs. And that also holds like, you know, so much weight in us. Very, yeah, um, the trauma. Yeah. And just, I think that we've also been taught that we constantly need to like have a specific relationship with dance and to define that like I'm dancing with this company or I'm doing this intensive like you're constantly like telling people what you're doing mm. um and I think now I am discovering that like I still am dancing in a way and I'm still connected to that whole side, but I don't need to like define it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I'm sure a lot of dancers, movement artists are kind of feeling that, that separation from the practice that we used to have. And, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with like being away from other people and, and like locking ourselves in a room um, because there is such a community that is is thriving on each other in the dance world. But, but yeah, I think uh, your perspective is so unique and so like this, this, this addition that you bring to movement, it, it's like another element, it's another layer. Like it really, it really, for me as someone who's not um a super film savvy person like I really connect neither, neither am I no way no way <laughs> no it's funny because I I film like 10 percent of the videos that are okay on my like Instagram little portfolio like the majority of it is from dancers who will send me videos that they've taken themselves or that someone else has taken for them. I film so little of, mm. of what it is. So people send um, you move uh, movement pieces and then you add on to them. Yeah. And I think the, the really interesting part about that whole um, system that mm. I've been doing since like January is that I usually don't have a conversation with them before they film it. Like usually all these videos are, are pre-filmed and then I, someone will message me like, Hey, I have footage. Do you want to do something with it? Or I'll message someone like, Hey, what are you doing? Do you have any footage lying around? Like it's super rare that I'm actually filming, like asking someone to film something for the animation, which oh, okay. is kind of wild because yeah. it usually always works out there's only been like one or two times where I've gone back to the person and be like I've had a go at it and it's just not the movement is not conducive to um this kind of animation but that I think I don't even know if that's actually ever happened but wow. yeah it's so it's I am now trying to transition into filming people my myself and also um like that project I did with um, our mutual friend, Susanna Haight. Mm -hmm, yes. um, that was filmed in 
a, a studio with a videographer and that was really informed like i've worked with her before so she really understands hmm. like the movement language that would be conducive for the animation and that would really fit together so that was like the first time that something was really filmed for the purpose of the animation wow. which is crazy because that's like one of my favorite videos and i think cool. you can kind of tell because it's like mm. i mean it's also filmed extremely well johnny <laughs> who filmed it is like a true professional and he did all the lighting and everything so it's beautifully filmed but i think that that stuff really excites me because i feel like i have a bit more um i almost feel like i'm choreographing a little bit even though i did not choreograph right. any of that it's just like a different way of kind of the pre-animation stage mm -hmm. i kind of just i'm able to like mold a bit more of what's going to happen that's really interesting. Yeah. When, when do you get to step in, you know? Yeah. In the process at the beginning or completely like after? Way at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause the, the, so this was for a, a clothing brand called Rue Carlota. And so did they reach out to you with clothes and outfits and say, you know, here, here's what we want to uh, market. Can you, can you make something with it? Or where, where was that first call or that first DM? So they had reached out to Susanna because I believe they had worked with her before. She had cool. done probably some, she does these really interesting uh, videos and photos that she then paints over and scans it's this mm. whole layering thing. Yes, um, I think I've seen a few of those. Yeah, and they're super beautiful. So I think they messaged her and they had seen a video, the first video that me and Susanna did together, they had seen that um and they were that, like, by the we way thinking, that video changed everything for me when I saw that oh that no first video, I was like what you could the do one that? where she's all in red yes yes oh my gosh sorry to interrupt you but I just need to tell no you, like, it's, yeah it's so cool no and the wild thing about that video is that the outlines that I did on on Susanna I had never done before like I just did it in the moment it was kind of that wow going back to that first experience I had um with my friend Devin in TDT on that film that I made it was just like I'm just gonna play around like I wasn't thinking like this is gonna be like this and then this is gonna happen it was just like oh I'm just gonna outline her mm. see what happens and then it ended up being like I watched that video over and over and over I mean Susanna's dancing is like magical so fluid. um but I was like, if I can watch my own work this many times, like, I think it's something special because usually I'll yeah. watch something of mine and be like, I'm bored with it. Like, yeah. oh, like I have to move face. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're like that with choreography oh, too. Sometimes sure. you're like, you do yeah. it the first time and you're like, this is so cool. And then the second time you see it, you're like, okay, <laughs> like, let's go. But no, yeah. So they reached out to her and then, oh. um, we just basically like, you know, had a conversation, they sent her the clothing and then, so it was all her running, running this. She hired Johnny and then she brought on um, Alexander Glutch to do the music for it. Cool. So it really wow. stemmed from, uh, from Susanna. I'm so grateful that she invited me on that project with her because I feel like that, that video in itself is like such a great visual representation of what I can send to brands and other people saying, you know, this yes. is what, is possible because it's of such high quality mm -hmm. um just with the the quality of dancing and and the video quality itself so that i i really value that project because mm -hmm. i feel like that was like my first professional gig i was like this is so exciting so yeah that was i really want to do more stuff like that that was incredible it was really great to have that white backdrop because it it really lets the the lines and her caught her, her her outfit with all of the colors and the the florals yeah. that are involved like it really does pop it's uh, for sure very readable very readable um, mm, frame that's a good word for it yes yeah, readable yeah that's so cool a lot lots of collaboration and uh yeah to 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 couple Susanna's fluidity fluidity and and like her movements that just kind of feel that same kind of wavy um, lines that you draw. Like it really is such a great marriage, the two of you, because I, I think her body is really, really like seaweeding around. And then we get to see these like 
auras come off of her and it's like mm. a very eth ethereal like like um um more expansive movement I, I i i the way i would describe it is that like it's just it it really adds such a cool layer that i've never never like even thought possible but i'm all Thank the time you. i'm like <laughs> looking at it in my head i'm like oh yeah so my arm's gonna go up and then my extension will go past my fingers and like all of yes. that stuff it's all being represented and i i think that's really really super dope thank you so much that that means a lot because that's what i'm that's what I'm thinking as well. I'm thinking, oh, if, if, if that was my body and I was doing that movement, I would feel the energy, you know, going right. away from me or coming back in or breaking or, yeah. I wonder if, because I often get a lot of non-dancers or, you know, non-movement artists, they often come up to me and they're like, uh, that was really great for you, but I, I don't, I didn't get it. I, did, I don't yeah. know what you were doing. I didn't get it. That's my, that was my parents' line every time they'd come to a show. Oh, your parents? I didn't get it. Didn't, oh, no. They'd be like, it's beautiful. Mostly my dad, he would be like, it was beautiful. It was incredible. I didn't get it, but it was oh, great. No. It's, it's a horrible reaction. It's like, what do you mean? Like, I just poured my like blood, sweat and tears on that stage. And yeah, so but 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 I think and I hope that with with your added element of, of line and and um, graphic design around the subject, like, I feel like that helps us as the audience to like really see the movement and like really mm. read it. And hopefully more non dancers will be inclined to have an opinion on movement after seeing these videos. Oh, for sure. And I think I've experienced that already a little bit with um, some of the other uh, video artists and visual creators that I interact with on like social media platforms where most of my work lives. They usually will actually have a lot more to say about the movement than I ever thought. I think sometimes I prejudge people that are non-dancers and like, oh, they won't understand. Right, and then yeah. they'll describe the movement back to me like, oh, like that was so fluid and it was so long and lengthened. And it's like, yeah, it, you totally get it. You totally get it. And cool. I, I think that most of, I don't know about your work, but most of my work leans more towards abstract. Like I'm not really thinking mm. about telling a story or mm. anything like that. So I think it's great because I, I love to hear people talking about like shape and form and quality um, just because I can relate to that more versus, you know, themes and that stuff's great mm -hmm. too. I just, yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't found a way how to incorporate that. That would be like the next step. I'd want to work with a choreographer and, and cool. a dancer to try to go into that but that's like a whole nother mm. realm of dance yeah yeah I, I think you're right I think there's an abstract and um there's an abstract theme to your work from what I've gathered but it, it but it still captures some kind of feeling some kind of emotion mm. some kind of surrounding setting like it, it, it's yeah even if there's not like, you know, once upon a time, she went to the <laughs> store, you know, like there's still, <laughs> there's still something happening there. Yeah. Cool. Oh, thank That's you. That's really cool. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> Non-fungible tokens, if, if anyone is unfamiliar with yes. them. Yes. Um, and I'm in, in no way an expert on this. Neither am I. This is our little like yeah. our little preview for people we're not nft experts but we can still talk about it we can still talk about it yes as you know the 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 non-expert um of the non-fungible token uh so you you made this this nft calm is that right the title of it yes yes and, but you sold it to someone else to to use for their project their their collection is that right so yeah so someone like purchased it or collected okay. it and it's now just a part of their collection so they cool. could resell it if they wanted to um but right now they're it's just sitting in their uh their collection cool now i i don't want to get too personal and, and and let me know if this is not a question to ask but were you directly paid for that yes so okay. yeah so Fantastic. basically <laughs> <laughs> there are like a bunch of different platforms 
I guess you could think of them as like stores mm. um, and they're all online. Um, and basically all of them have slightly different fees and slightly different like commission post sale commission rates for the artists and things like that. But basically all of them, you get paid Sweet. from wherever you're going to sell, it, unless you're selling it for nothing, like you're mm-hmm. just giving it away. Yeah. But um, that one was sold on OpenSea and I sold it for Ethereum. So basically when it was purchased, the Ethereum that the person bought it with, which is a cryptocurrency. If yes. Anyone is Sometimes curious. It's e? Yeah, ETH. Okay. ETH. Yeah, ETH. Gotcha, gotcha. So basically the ETH was just transferred into my crypto wallet after they purchased it. Um, wow. And then you can, you can uh, transfer Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of that back into real money i mean it's all real money but back yes. into like canadian dollars or us dollars that's wow. just a process to do that yeah was that was that a choice that you made a very cool choice but but was that a choice that you made on the whim or were you like really planning it out and like okay i know i'm going to get this much and i'm going to do that like i cuz it's such a no. new thing right like how could you know what's going on yeah i mean basically nfts have actually been around for a lot longer than than I think any of us realized. It's oh, just that okay. they're now extremely, there was a wave, the wave has gone down a bit now, but there was this massive wave in like February, a little bit after that of just NFTs blew up. And it was it was in mainstream media, like SNL did this get about it. Like it yeah. was very mainstream, but basically I was kind of, I don't know if you've heard of the app Clubhouse. I have, yes, where everyone you can have. sort of do audio um, yeah. chats and conversations. Yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. So I was on Clubhouse and I kind of, there was a group of us that I met through an online community and we were all like obsessed with NFTs and we were all, everyone's like was an artist who we were talking to and we all usually make digital art. So we were like, how do we make money? Like we want to sell our stuff. Totally. So it got, it was like 3 a.m. Clubhouse calls every night, just trying to understand what, nfts are why we should care why people should even buy digital art because Mm. it's not physical and i still don't fully understand that Mm -hmm. um even as a digital artist Mm -hmm. which is is strange so um so yeah so the first nft that i dropped was very just like a group of us where we're doing it we wanted to mint together minting is basically when you like officiate your nft so it becomes legitimate on the blockchain and a bunch of us were like we don't know what we're doing so we want to do it together so we all just had a piece of art we did it together and um both i did it with uh another another friend her name is emily and we both sold our our pieces so that was super cool very very cool very progressive and like it's interesting that you say that they've been around for a long time. I hadn't known. Cause yeah, I, I only found out about them in like February. I was like, what the heck is this? Is this another Doge someone, coin? Like- yeah. was someone was, when people was selling this stuff for like millions and millions of dollars, people were like, what is this? I want to make a million dollars. Like, yeah, that was me. I was like, I want to make a million dollars. Get rich quick kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. totally. Totally. I, I think it's really cool and awesome to have, you be paid directly and like really really kind of cut out the middleman on like who owns what I guess because it's digital like it doesn't need to be stored anywhere except for in the cloud or whatever so like really like you own it and you can hold on to it until you give it to the exact person you're going to sell it to and that like for me that's like a really progressive way to keep art like for the artist and then for the consumer like I just find that there's sometimes you know um regulations that come in or like big third-party companies that like will take a part of the profit and then it's like it doesn't seem so fair to the original artist who made this thing so I wonder if these nfts now can like really create a, a direct pathway from consumer to artist I don't know it's a new thing but yeah, I mean, like there, there is always going to be money taken out, like the, the mm. sites that the platforms do take a portion, it's a small portion, but um, well, I mean, it depends on which platform you're on, but okay. I think that 
it definitely is like empowering to be able to kind of feel like you're you you own your art you have your art you put it up and then someone buys it and then it gets directly sent to them through the blockchain and then they own it i think there are a lot of um i wouldn't call them downsides there are a lot of things that you know make me a little bit uncomfortable about nfts just because i also don't fully understand it like the environmental impact that nfts have are is quite oh, yes is quite massive so that was also something that you know people are looking for solutions to that and mm. using a separate blockchain and also different types of of cryptocurrency to kind of offset that environmental impact i mean the other thing mm. is there's a massive hierarchy in the nft space there are these platforms that you can't apply to be on you have to be invited to be on and they're considered to be, you know, the, the best platforms to be on. But then they also take the highest fees from your work. So hmm. within the space, I mean, within any space, there's always a lot of like moving parts and things that you have to kind of decide if you're going to compromise with. Right. But I do think that it is a space that you can find those pockets of really, really authentic community, especially with other artists and also you can find spaces where it's exciting to like actually be selling digital work that otherwise I mean my my work is just sitting on Instagram really right. I mean like I do I do certain things for you know brands and I make mm -hmm. filters for people but they all still live on the internet like nothing is Free and being accessible. transitioned into like you know real life and I'm putting that in quotations but <laughs> um yeah I know what you mean but yeah no I, I I don't know what my relationship with NFTs is right now or moving forward but I'm definitely open to to still creating work in that space I just am taking a bit of a it's a lot it's a lot of information it's also exciting because it's a lot of learning but mm -hmm, it, it mm -hmm. is a lot yeah I bet so yeah. so like not something that I could learn at school. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what? I bet you, I bet you in the next year or two, there's going to be some sort of <laughs> NFT 101, like intro to NFTs at UFT or something. For totally. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> History oh, no. of NFTs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We're living in it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause yeah, you're right. You're a lot of your work is sitting on Instagram. It's like very accessible and, and, um, and you know you make these filters that people can use and and can can uh, um, collaborate with you on, but but it really is just like open to anyone. Um, I wonder too because virtual reality is something that might be more integrated into dance. It, I think it is a little bit slowly getting in there, but I wonder if that's any interest to you too, like using the the drawings that you make and, and and the animations that you use but then putting it in a three-dimensional re virtual reality space i don't know is that has that come up on your uh, on your timeline or on your thought process yeah absolutely i actually had a mentorship um back when i was ending my third year in school with um an artist named uh freya bjork olafsson and i i don't know i believe they're still teaching at york university um and they're also an incredible dance artist like many things and they freya like specializes in in vr and she does a lot of stuff in that space so um i was i got into the suit and we were doing dance Cool. in in a 3d virtual reality space and i haven't i've never visited that again but i've been thinking about it a lot how i could make the lines into that virtual space and also make it super reactive so you could be moving in this space and then my lines could be actually interacting with you i have no idea how <laughs> that would how to even like enter that arena right now but no that's something that once once uh we're living in a post post covid life and we're able to really have um that's one thing that i don't think i could figure out by myself here i would need to mm -hmm. be in that kind of like actual studio space um and working with people that are specialized in that 
in that arena but no that's definitely something I've thought about and also just um yeah just the more spaces it can be in and mm. and like uh like for example Adelheid like Heidi Strauss's company here mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen some of their performances but yes. they use like they're like probably like like I didn't realize it at the time of watching all their shows a couple of years ago, but they've been a massive inspiration just because mm. the way that they intersect virtual reality, multimedia, everything with dance, it's like, it's pretty innovative, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's never, never really been done before. It feels like. Not here at least. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool to, to be able to, react in real time like a like a really resonated what you said about like as I move my arm like I would see the reverb of movement it would be so cool it would be so cool like as an as an improv artist like that would be monumental in changing the way I look at my movement like it, it's so um it's so kind of like different dimensional and 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 really um kind of kind of like putting like animations into real life and I, I wonder if that would be like a really trippy experience at first but like probably with practice yeah like <laughs> it would be better but yeah wow well and even having applications and training because I, I remember training and they constantly be like pretend you have an energy line coming oh. out of your arm or your leg and I'm like what if you could take a ballet bar class in VR with mm -hmm. the lines coming off of you like, how would that change how you, how you feel about your lines? And yeah, no, it, I mean, the exciting thing is the possibilities are endless. It's just like, how do, how do you get in that door? I don't know. Mm. I have to figure that out. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure you'll, you'll make a step in there at some point. Cause it, from what I'm seeing already, it's just so it's so innovated, just like Adelaide, like it's just, it's so what we need right now of, of mm. the intersection of digital and movement. And um, because everything is online right now, like it's still, we're still living in that virtual world. We might as well use it. Exactly. No, I totally agree. And you've also talked about working with musicians or I think maybe coming up soon, you're gonna be collaborating with, with musicians. Uh, I saw like Ramona V is one of, one of your collaborators oh yes um has that happened yet yeah, or am I it hasn't happened yet but okay. we've been <laughs> we've been working on a music video for like a year and a half it's oh. completely it's completely animated so cool um we've taken a pause from that that collaboration but I recently uh I talked to her and we're definitely gonna get back into it but that's all done in uh, pixel animation so it looks like a little like oh. game boy kind yes. of Thing. That was another thing that I spent the first probably like five months of, of quarantine here. I was like, I'm going to learn how to pixel animate. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I haven't revisited that in a long time. You just reminded me, actually, I got to, I got to start preparing myself to get back into that project. But no, I love collaborating with musicians. I've collaborated with my friend, Alexander Glutch for many years. We went to high school together. So mm. Uh, he's like a, a constant collaborator. And then um, I'm filming a music video in September. Um, I won't say the band just because I'm not sure if it's on the yeah, down no low, but no worries, no worries. They're, a, they're an indie band in Toronto. So we'll be filming with a dancer and Sweet. then I'll be animating over it. So it'll be another really amazing experience of being at the shoot and being in the space and being able to give a little bit of input. Yes. Yes. So yeah, so I'm really excited for that. But yeah, collaboration, honestly, like I would, I don't know what I'd be doing without collaboration just because I, I just, I don't know about how you and when you're, I mean, you're, you're a teacher. So obviously you're constantly working with other bodies in this space, but even for choreography, I just, mm -hmm. I love collaborating with other people. It's magical. It's, it's like an unspoken language, even if we're talking yes. English, like it's really yeah it's the closest thing I think to magic that I've ever found um and and it really uh it, it it's like I can't do it alone like I I sometimes will work on something by myself and I don't I, I feel like something's missing or 
it's good to get a second eye even too of just like yeah. hey, can you watch what I'm doing or like can you give me a another opinion so that it's not just my little blind mind you know going into the, mo- the movement it's it's not enough almost <laughs> yeah and honestly even if you even if you can do it alone that doesn't mean you have to like right you can yes. always be inviting other people into the space for sure <clears throat> yeah yeah collaboration is is key to keeping keeping art mm-hmm. alive and keeping us uh, moving forward I feel like absolutely Mm-hmm. that's really cool when, when you work with musicians is there is there any talk about like sound waves and frequencies and like all the nitty-gritty technical stuff or or do you just listen to the song and then it influences something it's mostly just I'll send them it's really similar to how I it's like a dancer will send me a video I'll work on it and then I'll send that video to the to the music artist it's pretty rare that um, I get into kind of the, the nitty gritty details also because the musicians I've worked with are just so it's like working with a dancer who can improvise like you mm. almost don't want to touch it too much because you're like I chose you for a reason I really want you to just like do what you do so I mean I would say the whole thing you just said about sound waves I am super interested in the animations that I do without a dancer just the lines I really want to figure out how to make those reactive so you can you know like those old screen savers on like your old Macintosh computer (laughs) totally that's what I'm totally picturing that yeah yeah (laughs) that's kind of what I'm I'm curious I know it's like it's funny because that's so like old school but (laughs) um yeah I'm really curious about how to how to like input those animations so that they're self making set to music and set to sound waves and like super reactive but that's another thing that I'm curious about that's on the list so but yeah (laughs) no I love I love working with musicians I think they also understand movement I think a lot more than Mm. than you think not you think but just we think in general totally totally yeah music is a big part of my like initial process, but I would love to talk to a musician about like how movement and dance like starts them off. That that would be like mm. very interesting to hear about. Oh, you should have someone on the podcast to talk about that. Yeah, Do, if you know anyone, I'd love to. Yeah, I'll send you some someone. names. Sweet, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I love to hear about like where things start, where the initial thought is um cool okay so yeah so so music video coming out in September very cool by the time this podcast comes out I'm sure we can uh, have access to it but um let me know when when it does become available uh because I'd love to see it um yeah I mean we, don't, we talked about so much I'm trying to think if there's anything else I I did want to ask a little bit about your um uh, your sister and you have like a collective called the daughter collective is that still active oh, yeah. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I mean I I think that will always be like active in some way we live together and Aww. um she had her studio here she just moved it but we're constantly working together like it's sweet a constant but I don't we're not like um we're not calling it anything right now we're just like in flux I would say but yeah totally fair. the the daughter collective we made a few years back when we were presenting like an installation and we're like we need a name what are we gonna call ourselves <laughs> I'm sure you have those moments where you're like what do I call my piece like I know like I just want it to be untitled like I, no one yeah. look at me <laughs> yeah exactly so cool, cool, cool. so yeah so but no we're still doing stuff together I love working with her she's super inspiring to me and like I she's always the person I don't know if you have this with your work she's the person that like okays it like she's the last person I show the video to and I'm like oh, are we good to go and she'll be so like yeah, go go yeah oh I have sisters too and I, I know that bond is very strong that's wonderful mm-hmm. that you can collaborate together yeah and like obviously you'll be sisters forever so you can work on whatever projects come up eventually wow okay cool then no worries at all we, we I don't want to you know beat a dead horse if it's not yeah. it's not running <laughs> but um but no this is this is so cool I Kristen I'm 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 so 
excited that, that, that you came on today. And uh, I think a lot of people have, have admired your work and I, I'm thrilled that we get to, to share our chat with everyone. I uh, did want to give you a couple minutes to plug anything that you have going on, any you know social media or anything you want to plug, the mic is yours. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can find me on Instagram at Kristen Stambolic. And then I think my name on there is Tiny Lines. Love that. So you can search either of those. And then on my Instagram, I just have one of those link trees with, you know, my Vimeo and uh, other interviews I've done. Also check out my filters on my Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, oh, I, oh, I can't talk about that actually. Oh no. Um, so I'm doing so many things right now that I'm like, oh, I can't talk about that. I can't talk about that. But there are many things in the works. So stay tuned because you will see me posting about them when, when I am allowed to. Very cool. All, all of that will be linked below and, and go and check out Kristen's work. It's absolutely stunning. It's so cool. Thank um, you so much. Oh my gosh. You're so, you're so welcome. Thank you for making time for throughout your busy schedule and, you know, nft My makings pleasure. and stuff yeah. so. <laughs> i've got a whole like lab in here where i'm making nfts so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes in your new home it's, it's yeah. um yeah thank you so much this is really really fun no my pleasure thank you so much for chatting with me i really enjoyed this i hope our paths cross in person soon yes they will i hope they so. will i'm sure yes. okay i'll stop the recording Thank you so much for listening to the Art Versations podcast. Please help the podcast community continue to grow by clicking subscribe or follow on your podcast platform and leave a review. As well, follow the podcast on Instagram at Art Versations Pod. You'll find photos of the guests you just heard, plus highlights and quotes from each episode. Let's keep the Art Versation going. Send in a DM with your thoughts about art and any questions you might have for guests. Special thank you goes out to Jen Marquez and Maxim Bartnowski for their contributions. And thank you, listener. Till next time.